bébé. Ah, bébé. Dude, I love how how a fifteen minutes, a fourteen, a fourteen minutes with seven seconds video took us one hour to cover. <laughs> I mean, it's because it it uh, we we like I repeat a lot, a lot of shit and it's the final product compared to the final product really cool. <laughs> As stacked as my dudes, my dudes, it's time to see what is every every isekai and fantasy anime for the neck from the next season fall of 2022 uh, 2024 whatever fuck it let's freaking do this baby let let's go. As the new fall season is with regards to sequels. There's not many promising looking new ones. I There's know Dandadan, it's, it's the the thing the thing or isekai then I mean the, the the honestly the thing about isekais is that they were so it's oversaturated the market it's oversaturated like, and, and we need we need something new uh, like a, a, a new genre or we need a more original way to approach the new is isekai shit and that's just my opinion. Two others that only look semi decent. I'm hoping I'm wrong since last season was pretty slow too, but at least we have the return of a it's lot of It's been a few fluid. seasons that it's been slow, dude. So, to start things off with the sequels, first we have the highly anticipated Re Zero Season 3. It's been three years since Season 2, so if you're a bit fuzzy on what happened then, I got you covered since I'm actually making a full ReZero recap. Honestly, I don't. Just a quick summary of really the events, then a closer look into the Honestly, I don't really like see. this this anime. I don't really enjoy this anime. The the main character I think is kind of lame. Like he's too. Uh, how? To, I, I I the the word that comes to mind is stupid, but. <laughs> That's not what I want to say, but I'm going to say he's kind of stupid. I don't know. I don't like how he's portrayed. I don't know if that's the way it's portrayed in the light novels or in the or in the um, manga, but I don't like it. Season three. Now, if you're someone who's been lucky enough to watch season three's massive 90 minute first episode early, then you'd already know that we're in for something special here. The first hour was a bit slow with all the setup, but the last half hour brings us exactly what we love from ReZero. It ensures from episode 2 we'll be right in the thick of it. It takes place a year after the events of season 2, and with the Amelia camp now fully united, they must overcome the crisis awaiting them in Anastasia's city of Priestella. I don't even it's remember setting with characters familiar the second season, but whatever. <laughs> Subaru is what's probably his toughest opponents yet. The anime itself will be split into two parts of eight episodes each, the first being the attack arc starting October 2nd, then the next being the counterattack airing February 5th. So, while the first part ends early in November... So are you telling me that they survive and they're gonna counterattack? Fuck you for, for uh, spoiling me. Now, before we get into the next anime, in addition to all these new anime to watch from next season, I've also got an amazing recommendation for you to read as well. The With today's sponsor, Web Novel, you can read the first Legendary Beastmaster across Whatever. Season 2, which is the isekai where the protagonist's past and current life intersect with each other. There's the orphan Ryo who already existed in the current world, then Freak. the student Haruto who died in his previous world. It was one day that Ryo woke up with the memories of Haruto, and that's pretty much where the story begins. Season 1 was mostly an introduction to the world, characters, and protagonists, so in Season 2 you can expect to get more into the bulk of the story. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me rephrase it. But anyway, next we have Spirit Chronicles Season 2, which is the isekai where the protagonist... Spirit Chronicles, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me check that one, let me check that one, maybe, maybe it's cool. Spirit... 
Maybe it's a maybe it's a good one. Protagonists past and current life I like the design. I like the design. There's the orphan Ryo who already existed in the current world, then the student Haruto who died in his previous world. It was one day that Ryo woke up with the memories of Haruto and But you that's see that like the story they died in season their in their previous in their previous the world, world like can, uh, can so we season two, can we bring it some, something new like like they did I think that one of the one good one good that that I I hate that anime but it's a good way to bring uh people up from another world is the um, Shield Hero, I think that's how it's called, the Shield Hero anime. I didn't really enjoy that that anime because it was just too. Like we we all we all knew that it was gonna end up well. Like like that like the main character it was gonna was gonna get his revenge, but the way the 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 things that happen after the, he gets his revenge is like. Mm, He's so he's overpowered and he's gonna destroy everybody. It just got boring and shit. I don't like it. Expect to get more into the bulk of the story. Like it was, it was more interesting when he was like this disgusting, disgusting to the world that nobody likes him. It was more interesting. It was, it was, uh, it was different from like most, most um isekai anime that I've seen, like we have Sword Art Online, like in every single one somebody dies or somebody gets trapped in the in the video game, but in this one these dudes are getting called to the world to protect it. That is really cool, that is a good trope, that is an, an interesting trope. Not overused, more of those I think. Fantasy tropes, though, so there'll probably be a waifu that needs saving, then that waifu will probably end up joining his harem. That being the case, okay, it has, a, it's a, has, has a harem, so I'm just gonna two. cross it up. I don't like harems. Everyone's favorite edgy protagonist returns with Arifoda to season three. Yay! I only see it because of the edgy, edgy, edgy main character. With the Halia. After leaving the I, and I literally the just watched it because of the main character. The, 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 the story is just life. shit, though. A point made extremely clear by the number of heads being chopped off. This will be the new conflict Hajime gets involved in, along with the new labyrinth and more harem stuff. It seems they might be exploring. Like more I don't know, I don't know. Season. Like that and his I don't know how. The Shangri-La Frontier returns with season two as well, and after watching this is one, this is one show. The, this one Shangri-La Frontier is one, one that I cannot take seriously, simply because of the design of the character. I cannot take this seriously because, dude, he's a he has a bird face. Like, come on, brother. Back at Anime NYC, I can confirm it's more or less pretty much the same. It's still a solid anime about gaming, and it still has that high-quality animation. Season 2 looks like it'll be starting from the Nephilim Hollow Arc, which is actually a different game from the one Sunraku is usually playing. It's actually my personal favorite part about the anime since it's pretty entertaining to see Sunraku's skills in other games. Okay. So that's where I'm pretty sure the story is headed this season. Okay, maybe we maybe, maybe I'll try it. Game fantasy is Gungale Online and it's P90 Rusher Len. A series some of you may know is actually one of my personal favorites. I don't know, Ever man. The Death Gun arc in SAO, I don't know, Sword Art Online, it's really, it's a... Uh, Sword Art Online is like... Uh, it, I, I don't understand how it got so pop popular. Like I, I've I've seen it. I've seen it repeatedly. I've just as a matter of fact I'm about to finish it again. Uh but it's not one of the, it's not like it's not great. It's not great. It is not mediocre. It is not it it is not good nor acceptable. It's something in between. Between good and acceptable. But the thing that I hate is that everybody fucking falls in love with the main character. Can we fucking eliminate that trope? Can we can can we eliminate that shit? It's boring. I don't know. I, I like I don't know how Japan is in a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe there's har harems in Japan. I don't know. If they do, that's cool for them. I I I'm only looking for the one.
the chosen the chosen one just one but yeah that i, I don't like when the, we had harems in the fucking in fucking uh tv shows like when everybody falls in love with one with the main character it's just like oh dude not again not again not again and honestly the the designs in this one like just for the look, the looks of the main character, which I suppose th th this is the main character, because I guess, uh, I guess she is because he, she appears in the in the cover on Crunchyroll or or Netflix. I don't know which one of those two is. I don't like it. I don't like it. And you know that I love my pink characters. I, I you know that I love my pink characters, but there's something. It's like. It, I don't. I feel like it's like a little little child. A series and some of you may know is actually one of my personal. I favorites. I don't think that I will take it seriously. Like Ever look at look at them. SAO, I've been a big fan of the shooter style world GGO is known for. The whole anime battle royale thing just appeals to that part of me that's addicted to FPS games. So to see Len and her crew back playing GGO like it's Warzone. Well, that's an itch I've been wanting scratched for a while now. As for what you can expect, well, aside from Len taking advantage of her broken character model, there's another squad jam tournament. Also, that also that, also, also freaking that. Oh my god, I hate it. I hate that every single dude that comes to another isekai, mo well, most not every, not every single one. It's a, it's a broken character. Like, they know everything. They have the most powerful shit ever. And it's like, dude, I would like to see an isekai in which you have, and the main character has to learn the throbs of, of, of everything. That they have to suffer to get into become, to, to get to the point that they become the, the, the hero of the story. Like, I, I, I saw, um, uh, I started watching a, I'm not even going to call it an anime, I'm going to call it a hentai, because basically that's what it was, dude. Uh, uh, what's the name? Redo, Redo, Redo of the Healer. I, I didn't, I didn't finish it because I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't. But the fact that he comes from the lowest place and he, like, becomes so becomes powerful through that pain is really cool it's not cool the way that he got his power like he's the, through through the type of pain because that is horrible dude that is horrible but if a character gets if you can see how a character gets powerful throughout the story and not just deliver a character that it's already strong like for example Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist gives you two brothers that are strong. We know that they are strong. We know that that uh, 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 I forgot the name of the other brother. Um, the Edward. Edward. Uh, that Edward is a freaking broken because he can do whatever he wants with the alchemy because he doesn't need a a, a, a catalyst or a circle, whatever it, whatever the name is. But we see them grow, like we see them when when she goes to the Armstrong um facility with the sister. We see them grow. I I love I love seeing that in in anime, like. Okay, you have a strong character, but they grow throughout the freaking throughout the freaking story. They are not given just the power from the get go. That's that's why uh, why I this this that, that's what I dislike about the character of Kirito. He gets everything. He gains he gains everything from the get go. He doesn't fight for anything. He doesn't fight for anything. Everything is given to him. It's boring. Like the most, the most um, interesting part to me from Sword Art Online is exactly when he's in a vegetative 
I think this word regenerative wave and Alice and Alice and Asuna and all of the friends are trying to protect the world and uh, from the from the all of the all of the players that think that the Japanese are trying to conquer the 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 Korean server and all that. That to me that is the best part of the fucking show. Because they are showing you characters that are strong, but they are losing. They are losing, and they have to do as much as they can so they can. But then, then comes Kirito. He puts his hand and he stops a fucking fight. It's just fucking boring. It'll be more or less the same action and BS we've come to expect. At least up until that. We need good anime old. like in the nineties. God damn it. U.S. citizen. No, I'm not U.S. U.S. citizen. I can here. vote. I cannot vote from anywhere because I'm not U.S. citizen. Shut up. Fantasy sequels include the Beyond the Snow Saga for Blue Exorcist. Blue Exorcist, I didn't know that I've seen. Seven Deadly Sins, then the two Isekais of Demon huh? Lord Retry and Tensei what? Kizuku. What the fuck? All except Demon Lord Retry aired less than a year ago, so if you watch the first season, not much should be very different in the second. Huh? As for this new installment Whatever. of Demon Lord Retry, it's an adaptation of the manga's sequel, something that came out shortly after the anime's first season. Limon so, no this will be a brand new production with the new studio and everything, focusing on the Demon Lord and his mysterious encounter in a dungeon. It also veers from the light comedy of the first season and approaches topics a little bit darker. Okay, there is Demon Lord. still some comedy mixed in, but apparently it's layered with some truly villainous behavior too. Okay, I can't hey, maybe, maybe we, we try it. Season, but perhaps the story will be entertaining enough to make up for it. Lastly, we have season 5 of Donmachi, which, just like Re Zero, I'll also be doing a recap for. If you're not caught up, I'm guilty of watching this one. I'm guilty of watching this one. Season five is gonna I think that I think better. that is funny. This too, I have but it's bad. It's it's te it's earlier. terrible. It's I can terrible tell you though. The quality and plot have quite a bit going for it. For me, the story seems like it's about to get really interesting. Since if you've been wondering about Sierra and the fray of Melia, that whole subplot is about to come to the forefront. It seems the mystery behind their I need to rewatch it. Unraveled soon. I need to rewatch it. This brings us now to all the new anime, which if we start with the isekai, we first have Loner Life in Another World. It's a novel with a premise similar to Arifureta, where an entire class of students get isekai'd one day. Isekai. The thing about our protagonist, though, is that just like the title states, he's a loner. He's an outsider who thought he could restart by getting whatever cheat skill he wanted. Unfortunately, all the cheat skills were taken by all the other students, so the only skill he could get was, you guessed it, the loner skill. One that makes him incapable of joining a party. This makes him a recluse just like how he was in his old life, up until circumstances force him to interact with his classmates. It's until then though you'll learn about his loner type powers, along with his completely ridiculous attitude towards everything. Like, when I say this character's ridiculous, I really mean it. So, if you want to see an isekai with a quirky protagonist and somewhat unique powers, then loner life in another world might be worth I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say, can we get a serious isekai? Like, a serious one? Can we get a, can we get a, a serious one? Like, <laughs> like a berserk isekai, God damn it! please. That, like, in that level? Worth checking out for you. Like, like, no. high fantasy isekai. That would be so fucking cool. We have the seasonal villainous anime since it. Ah, uh, this one I want to see. This, this one is one, one I, uh, that I want to watch. I want to watch this one. It adapts the light novel. I'll become a villainous who goes down in history. I want to watch this it's one. It's a fairly standard take on the whole villainous trope, except the unique thing here is that the main character chooses to embrace her role as the villainous, rather than try to avoid the bad ending surely awaiting her. She instead chooses to fully commit to the role she reincarnated into and become the greatest villainess the world has ever known. I want to watch the this one. Is, this one's fun. This one tries, sounds fun. The more fun. The people around fun. her start to like her. So, all in all, it's your seasonal dose of shoujo fantasy. Now, the rest of the anime are more traditional fantasies, so let's start things off with what I think looks best. This is Demon Lord 2099, another anime from JC Staff taking the whole Demon Lord resurrection theme and throwing it into the future. It's been 500 years since the Demon Lord was defeated, and with Japan now this cyberpunk metropolis, his reawakened self must come to terms with the changed landscape around him. It's a unique premise that finally answers the question I'm sure all of us have had at least once before. Why did the Are noodles al dente or not?
these fantasies always have to take place in a medieval setting. Well, fuck yeah! Is Why? Magic. At least it's combined with engineering to make it more of a sci-fi. And yes, case. I write it because it's maybe I'm trying. We haven't yet seen before. He's a streamer. One, I'm genuinely interested to see how it progresses. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. To see anime JC staff are doing this season, and one is the time travel romance of the do over damsel conquers the dragon nope. emperor, nope. while the nope. other is nope. the stories of girls who couldn't be magicians. The former is a second chance redo revolving around an executed princess and her engagement. Oh, no, thank you. Next, we have the healer who was banished from his party is in fact the strongest. A standard fantasy portraying what it's like to be in the wrong field of work. Here we have a healer kicked out of his party for not doing his job, only to reveal he's not really a healer at all. He's instead a close quarters fighter who's actually really strong. Mm. Why then was he in a party as a healer? Well, those are the questions that keep me up at night. It's something I'm sure we'll figure out when we watch it. I don't think this is an anime I'll personally get into, but if it ends up being good, then come back and let me know in the comments. This next one I was actually fairly interested in because of the title, but after realizing Notorious Talker didn't mean he literally talked shit to everyone, my disappointment was immeasurable and my day was ruined. I truly thought this was a gaming anime about a generational shit talker. Turns out Talker is actually just his job class, and while the position itself comes with zero combat skills whatsoever, it does prove useful in fulfilling the goal he's set up for himself. He's able to use his skills to unite all sorts of powerful people under him. This leads into the whole running the world's greatest clan thing, which could prove interesting given its departure from the standard action fantasy. Up next is what? Goodbye where, where, Dragon where, Life, where, where, which is where, where did I, Where did I just heard that? Where did I just hear that exact, exact plot? It's a gaming anime about a generational shit talker. Turns but okay, out uh, is actually just his the stalker, class, and let's... while the position itself comes with zero combat skills whatsoever, it does prove useful in fulfilling the goal he's set up for himself. He's able to use his skills... Okay, and goodbye, dragon, goodbye life. dragon life. ...which is the story of the strongest dragon reincarnating in the body of a human. He now lives as a regular villager, enjoying his peaceful life far away from Until the Until something dragon. gets attacked. Is, until he meets a human-snake hybrid, becomes friends oh. with her, then sets off on an adventure together. This leads to a dynamic of monsters trying to get along with humans, and all the standard fantasy stuff that comes along with Boring. it. Boring. An interesting-looking comedic fantasy is Studio Zero G's adaptation of Let This Grieving Soul Retire, a story that centers itself around a Masayuki-type character. In a world where treasure hunters are more prevalent than ever, one person's legend reigns above the rest. The thing is, this legend kind of manifested on its own. You see, while he is revered by most as one of the best treasure hunters out there, our protagonist hasn't actually done anything. So, the anime is him and the people around him, building him up as this amazing person when in actuality he's really just normal. Kind of like an anime where Masayuki is the main character. Uh, Finally, we not have the Starry Bride, which is more of a serious romance fantasy nope. catered. No, thank you. Okay, that that was it. That that was it. That was freaking it. Fuck it. All right. <laughs>